Hey everyone, Spencer Kaufman here with How To Video Channel. Today I'm going to show you how to wire outlets in parallel or using the pigtail method. So you would do this when you are wiring a string of multiple outlets. Practical application would be uh, for a bedroom, for example, when you have one breaker line that's going to supply an entire bedroom and you want to have several outlets in the room, that one line could continue through all of these outlets. Or if you have multiple rooms, or a really good example of this is if you're wiring up a kitchen or a bathroom somewhere where you need a protected outlet, GFCI or ground fault indicator, then you would use one of those really expensive outlets and then wire from there to the standard outlet and then these outlets would be protected as long as they run back to the ground fault outlet. So you could do that with this as in uh, parallel wiring or pigtail method. Now, we have another video on the How To Video channel that talks about how to wire outlets with a daisy chaining method. This is different. This is daisy chaining or series wiring. You can check that video out. It'll be in a card up above. So watch that. That is a different method uh, that you can use to wire using daisy chaining. Basically, uh, a daisy chain method goes from outlet to outlet. So if one receptacle fails, the rest of your outlets do not have power. This method, the pigtail method or parallel, is uh, from the hotline to an outlet individually. So if one outlet fails, the rest of them still will have power. In addition, this is how you can help remember it, is this is more, this is a parallel because these wires are running to the outlets and these are in parallel with each other and these are like your hotline continuing from one to the next. So what happens is if this outlet fails, for example, the power is coming from your hotline in, from your breaker, and it's going down to the outlet or into the receptacle box, but it's also at the same time simultaneously continuing down the line, going to your next receptacle, continuing down the line maybe to the next bedroom. And so if this outlet fails or this outlet fails or one of these outlet fails somewhere where they have six or eight, uh, then this is still getting power through your main line. So there's power law running here and here, which is a parallel lines of power. Or I like to remember because you know these wires are coming off through a pigtail to each outlet, they're gonna be in parallel with each other. So this is different than series or daisy chaining. So if you have any questions or comments, please comment below and I'll do what I can to help you out. I also highly encourage you to watch that other video so you can help understand the difference. Now, I use these terms. There are four terms, basically. It's uh, daisy chaining in series and then pigtail and parallel. People confuse these all the time. So someone could be talking about pigtails and they're actually talking about daisy chain or they could be saying daisy chain and they're actually talking about parallel. So those terms are widely confused. Just know there are two different types of wiring. One outlet to outlet and one which is off of the main line to each outlet individually. So that's the two different types and here we go. Now we're gonna get into how to do this. So we have our hotline in. From here, what you're going to do is take some jumper wires and you're going to connect them to your hotline and you're going to take this one, this is a continual hotline, you're going to connect that so that all three of these are going to be connected and then these jumpers are going to power this outlet. So how do you do that? Connect them up with wire nuts and a good lineman's pliers so you can twist those wires together. So we're going to do that right now and I'll wire up all these and then continue on. So bear with me. Thanks for watching this video. Please hit that subscribe button, bell icon, and like button to show your support for How To Video Channel. You can even send us a tip and become a member to support the work we do here at How To Video Channel. Thank you. All right, so there we go. Now we have these three wires wire nutted together, the neutral, the hot, and the ground. Some people say, hey, why'd you waste a wire nut on that ground line? because none of these others are insulated, so you don't really need to insulate the connection. You know what, that's a preference. I personally like to wire nut everything because it's pretty certain that if you have a good wire nut tightly wound on there, it's not gonna come apart in your box somewhere else and you won't have any faulty ground line or anything like that. So I just, I use it, they're cheap, they're easy, and it looks nice. But again, 
Uh, depends on what you prefer to do. In some places it might be codes, so make sure you know your local codes. Next thing you want to do once you have that connected, uh, so at this point in time, if for example you turned your power on, this would be coming down, you'd be powering these, so this one would be live. So if you took your tick tracer, this would, would illuminate and these would not because nothing is connected to this outlet. This is, is still dead, obviously it's not connected, and this is still dead. And so right now you've just connected your power to this line, so this would now be hot. So the power would continually be flowing here, and if this outlet or if this failed, uh, you're still going to have power here. That's what we're talking about, about the pigtail method. You're pigtailing off, the power source is continuing down, so essentially you have two currents running parallel to each other. So now you're going to connect this to the outlet. Uh, some outlets, they tell you where to put the white and the, go and the black wire. Uh, white goes on silver, black goes on gold. Uh, you can wire to the top or the bottom. I per personally prefer to put my incoming into the bottom and then the outgoing from the top. In this case, we're just having an incoming, so I'll wire them up right on the bottom. Again, you can do whichever works best for you, whichever you prefer, or if you have a local code or if you were taught a certain way, obviously, then you would want to follow that. Another thing I like to do, a, a practice, is I like to make the, the turn, the loop of the wire, go in the direction of the screw is turned. So you can see I made my loop go like this clockwise or, or downward, and then I'm turning downward. So as I turn, it pulls the wire around the screw a little more. All right, so there's another pro tip for you. So now we'll do this one. If you need any of these tools, feel free to use the product links. We'll try to have them linked in the video. Otherwise, check out the links in the description below to view any of these tools that we use in this video. Okay. So at this point in time, you would now have one working outlet. Obviously, uh, what you would want is these wires to be longer, uh, but that's up to you. It depends. I, I personally like these to be at least six or eight inches, but this is for demonstrative purposes. I did it smaller so it was closer together to fit in the frame. Now, all of this would be in your outlet box. So if you have these wires like 10 inches, it's going to be way too much to fit in an outlet box, so beware of that. This all goes in your, your single gang outlet in the wall, and then this would be behind your sheetrock uh, connecting to your next outlet or your next box. This would be pulled in, this one would be pulled in, and then you would use these jumpers just like this to connect this one. So uh, what I'm going to do now is connect this outlet up, I'll wire this up, and then when we're finished, I will explain to you again how it all works and the process of it. And uh, then if you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Also, I encourage you, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and the bell icon to stay tuned to future videos. So here we go, we're gonna wire this one up as we continue on with the uh, parallel wiring or pigtail method. Thanks for watching. I really hope you're enjoying this video. Please hit that like button, bell icon, and subscribe button. In addition, it would mean a lot if you send us a tip if this video has helped you. Also, feel free to check out our playlist that we have for other electrical and DIY videos on How To Video Channel. Thank you. So here we go. Now we have the continual uh, outlet going. The next pigtail is started. So now what we'll do is wire up this uh, again. You saw how we did it over here. We're gonna do the same thing. So you'll take these, put the loop in them, clockwise to be able to wrap around. This one, it looks a little short. So what we're gonna do there is just take the wire stripper and pull a little bit more of the plastic insulation off of that wire. Uh, what I like to make sure of is two things when you're pulling this off. Is number one, you want this to be about a half an inch. That's what I go by. Half an inch will be, give you a good wrap around that screw. If it's too long and you have extra, that's not good because then that's other exposed wiring. Ooh, that's a compromised wire right there. If that happens, don't worry, just take it back a little bit more. But if that continues to happen, then you're gonna need a new jumper because uh, that wire is weak and if you have 
any of that going on, then what, what's going to happen is uh, your connection will eventually break during that, and that's going to cause some problems later on. That's how outlets fail. Uh, and then, of course, in this one, if the outlet fails, the rest of yours are still going to work, which is nice, because we are doing a pigtail wiring. So let's wrap this one around here. Beauty of a ground wire. So much easier to connect. If you have a product and would like to request a how-to video, please reach out to us on our channel and we'll connect about how we can work together. Okay, so for the video purposes, you can see we this isn't as perfect as I'd like it. I, I Normally, I wouldn't want any of this wire visible, uh, but of course, if it's a connection, it's still a connection. So I would prefer to have it a little bit more looped around and underneath more, but that's okay for right now. Uh, if you were doing this in the field, I'd definitely make sure that's a lot more solid. I mean, it's pretty solid, it's a tight screw, but still, uh, you don't want to worry about that when you're trying to shove it into a box or something, is it gonna come off, things like that. So here we are, this is how you would wire using the pigtail method or in parallel wiring. So again, if you need any of these tools, feel free to check them out, products will be listed. Uh, I also really recommend using this because you can plug this into your outlet and it'll light up and tell you accordingly what's going on if one of these is loose or something like that. Tick tracer is also very handy to let you know if a, a line is live. So how does this work? The power is going to be coming from your breaker box. Right now it's going to send two simultaneous feeds of power. One to this outlet and the other to the next. One to this outlet, the other to the next. That is how you can help remember it's called in parallel because uh, one line is becoming two lines and they're both running. So the power will be constantly supplied to this outlet and down this line and to this outlet. And if for some reason this outlet goes bad or this outlet goes bad because you're down line. So if this outlet went bad, power is still going to be going up here in your wall to this outlet. Whereas if you do daisy chaining, you'd be putting this wire right here into the outlet and then this wire right here out of the outlet and then this wire into the outlet and this wire out of the outlet. So if this outlet failed, everything down line fails as well. It's all dead. So that's the primary difference between wiring in parallel, uh, pigtail parallel and wiring in daisy chaining or series. Uh, think of Christmas lights. If one Christmas light fails, everything else down line usually fails as well. That's series. Whereas this is a pigtail uh, or parallel if this fails, you still have power here. So again, any questions or comments, please post them below. I really hope you found this video helpful and valuable. If so, please consider uh, becoming a channel member or leaving us a tip. Thank you.